hello students today we are going to study chapter 8 local government from our class 11th political science textbook indian constitution at work we have already studied about what is local government and about the three tri structure of our local government the panchayati raj system now we will study about the 73rd amendment and what changes it brought into the local government or the panchayati raj system so let us begin panchayat chunav or panchayati elections are an important part of our local government you can see these pictures they are all showing some of the other type of elections to you because first the panchayat was uh, started without any elections we have we have studied about that but then later it was decided that there should be uniform elections in the country when the panchayat should be elected so that they represent the people and it is a body which gets some constitutionalism so all the three levels in the panchayat are elected directly by the people the term of each panchayat body is 5 years if the state government dissolves the panchayat before the end of its 5 years term fresh elections must be held within 6 months of such dissolution before the enactment of this amendment in many states there used to be indirect elections to the district bodies but now we have direct indirect uh, direct elections by which people are elected another important thing of our 73rd amendment brought in was the reservations according to this amendment provision is there for mandatory reservation of seats in all panchayats at all levels for dalits that is the scheduled caste and adivasis that is the scheduled tribes they can also provide reservation for obcs so it is important to note that these reservations apply not merely to ordinary members in panchayats but also to the post of adhyakshas or the chairpersons it is there is also mandatory reservation of one third of all seats in all panchayats to all levels of women with the reservation for women applying to the seats reserved for dalits and adivasis as well ओके तो इसका मतलब यह है कि वन थर्ड ऑफ द सीट्स तो विमेन के लिए रिजर्व है ही और ये वन थर्ड ऑफ द सीट्स रिजर्वेशन जो है ये शेड्यूल कास्ट शेड्यूल ट्राइब्स एंड बैकवर्ड कास्ट की विमेन के लिए भी एप्लीकेबल है सो so, इसमें मतलब क्या हुआ कि इनको पहले तो विमेन को वन थर्ड रिजर्वेशन मिला क्यों क्योंकि वो विमेन है फिर उन्हें रिजर्वेशन मिला क्यों क्योंकि वो शेड्यूल कास्ट है या शेड्यूल ट्राइब है या बैकवर्ड क्लास है सो so, इसका मतलब ये हुआ that uh, this means that a seat may be reserved simultaneously for a women candidate and one belonging to the scheduled caste or scheduled tribe thus a sarpanch would have to be a dalit woman or an adivasi woman kyunki unka itna reservation unko double reservation mil ja raha hai isliye most of the time sarpanch jo hota hai wo dalit woman ya adivasi woman hi banti hai to is tarah se inko uh, ek uh, status milta hai society mein because of this kind of reservation system this was given so that these women can also achieve a status and an equal level in the society it is worth noting that 73rd amendment not only make this mandatory reservation for the ordinary members but it also made mandatory reservation of the position of panchayat chairperson at all levels in proportion to their share in the state population then we have uh, Okay, so that is how reservations work in the panchayati raj system. Next, we have transfer of subjects. Twenty-nine subjects, which were earlier in the state list of subjects, are identified and listed in the eleventh schedule of the constitution. These subjects are to be transferred to the panchayati raj institutions. These subjects were mostly linked to development and welfare functions at the local level. The actual transfer of these subjects depends upon the state legislation. So you know there are three lists: the state list, the concurrent list, and the uh, Uh, residual list okay so the state list so there are some subjects in the state list which are applicable to the local uh, level and so those subjects may be transferred by the state legislature to the local governments this is a list that has been given here you can see some subjects listed in the 11th schedule so these are such subject uh, subjects which are applicable at the local level also so the state legislature will transfer these subjects to the local level and they can make their rules and they can make their uh, laws regarding these subjects 
So the provisions of the 73rd Amendment were not made applicable to the areas inhabited by the Adivasis population in many states of India. We have studied about that in the last uh, video. In 1996, a separate act was passed extending the provisions of the Panchayat system to these areas. So more pay power were given to the Gram Sabhas of these areas so that these areas could also flourish. Then we have some commissions like the State Election Commission, which is to supervise and manage elections to local bodies. Much as the Election Commission of India manages state assemblies and uh, and uh, par parliamentary parliamentary elections, the State Election Commissioner is an independent officer and is not linked to no, no, to or nor is this officer under the control of the Election Commissioner of India. So that is how the election State Election Commission works. It also is responsible for all the elections that are held in the Panchayat Raj institutions, and it is an independent body is not responsible to anybody else. Another commission that is there is the State uh, Finance Commission, which was which is established every five years to review the financial position of the local bodies and recommend the principles that should govern the allocation of funds and taxation authority to local bodies. So this governs the uh, finances of the local bodies. How is their budget and how is their work and how is their work and how is their work and how is Every five years it is appointed. With the appointment of State Finance Commission, it is ensured that the allocation of funds to the ruler local governments may not become a political matter. So it remains in the hands of the ruler government only. So this was your uh, topic about the 73rd amendments uh, that have been brought in into the local government. In our next uh, video, we will study about the 74th amendment, which talks about uh, um, developments that have understood the what the municipality does or what the urban area have been set up with so we'll study about the 74th amendment in the next video hope you understood have a good day